people say, this is really weird, but I can't stop drinking it. <laughs> so, you don't open up a brewery to make beer. You can do that at home. You open up a brewery to sell beer. Go wherever. Wherever, yeah. Wherever the good beer is, that's where we go. That's right. That's why we're here. Yeah. Welcome to Stout Conversations, where every week we sit down with creative thinkers in the craft beer industry and beyond. Your hosts, Ken and April, live and work in a 24-foot RV, traveling the country in search of great stories around a great beer. What happens when a pilot, historian, architect, and an investigator get together in homebrew? Stone's Throw Brewing happens. Just a stone's throw away from downtown Little Rock, this nano brewery is off the wall when it comes to experimental beers, ciders, and building community. So man, Stone's Throw, we're here with the inn. Hi, I'm Ian. <laughs> so, let's give people a little background. We're here in Little Rock, right? We're in Little Rock, not North Little Rock. That's right? correct. Right? Okay. I keep, we're like right on the borderline where we're staying, so. Oh, right. We kind of. <laughs> are, are you in the RV park at uh, Yeah, that's great. Yeah, right on the river, river, bridge across Beautiful. the river. Yeah, it's great, great place, the, yeah. The bridges around here are just amazing yeah. at night, the way you guys light them up and stuff. Oh, yeah. And they change all the time. It's really cool. But, True. So, and they connect all the breweries. <laughs> that's the best part. That is absolutely the best part. Ooh, the bridge to the brewery. That's right, that's right. The bridge to beer. So, <laughs> so we're over at Stone's Throw. How long have you guys been in business here in Little Rock? Uh, we opened up in the summer of uh, 2013. Uh, to the public, we actually started working on the space in 2012. Uh, so uh, we'll be celebrating our sixth anniversary this summer. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, really driving around and stuff, Little Rock was not even on our radar. And I right. don't think it's like a lot of our fellow beer drinkers talking to them had no idea. <sighs> yeah. How did Little Rock blow up? I mean, if you come to Little Rock now. Right. There it's, are several really good breweries here. Uh, it's a smaller scene. Um, uh, I think we had um, an underserved market in general. Um, you know, Little Rock, Bedroom Paul, is about 800,000 people. Okay. Uh, and we had two brew pubs and, uh, and a small production brewery. Uh, and, uh, and that's honestly uh, three brew pubs and small production brewery was the production for the entire state of Arkansas wow. up until about 2011, I guess. Uh, and so that's, um, um, I think, you know, the, the market was just ripe uh, with the rise of craft brew across the country. Um, you started having that. It was kind of interesting because a, a lot of it was organic, like like us home brewers who had been doing this for, for you know, um, uh, most of our adult lives, wanting to have a, um, uh, try it out as a professional thing, to have, a, have it as a business. Um, and we've seen a lot, which is also kind of interesting, of people from out of state, from more um, saturated areas, coming to Arkansas to open up breweries because the, um, the laws are very um, uh, amenable uh, to brewing and just because there was um, a lot less competition. Uh, but uh, but your market's saying, still yeah. young. I mean, yes. Arkansas as a whole has, what, 30 or 40 some breweries? <sighs> a little over 30. Focused. Um, and the two largest populations there is Northwest Arkansas, which is Fayetteville, Spring Hill, Rogers, Bentonville, uh, Tyson, and Walmart are headquartered up there, and the university's up there, uh, and then Little Rock, the state capital. Um, and really, until about a year or two ago, all the new openings were just in those two metropolitan areas. Uh, and where, what we're seeing as a trend now, which I really like, is, is the, uh, the rural breweries. Uh, like oh, breweries yeah. opening up in, in towns of a few hundred people. Uh, or in on farms with no towns at all, and we're seeing a lot more of that. And uh, and uh, I know you guys have, uh, you guys drew, drove Highway Seven, which is a beautiful mm -hmm. drive to the Ozarks. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the great things about uh, uh, about Arkansas is that we have we have a fairly a fairly mellow paced uh, urban uh, uh, sort of scene, uh, like not not big city, but then then right. you've got. Uh, hiking and canoeing and uh, kayaking and camping and, and the hills and farmland and all that kind of stuff uh, and uh, we're seeing uh, uh, seeing that get uh, tied into the local brewing scene quite a bit too uh, so it's kind of a fun time to be uh, in it because we're we haven't quite peaked yet like the rest of the country some of the some of the bigger areas are starting to peak and and, and even contract a little bit uh, and uh, I don't think I don't think we're quite peaking yet, uh, but the breweries that are opening up are in, in a, a non-traditional uh, uh, beer scenes. 
uh, which is which is a lot of fun um, because um, you can you can make all the beer that you want that you think will appeal to um, uh, the the non city market in, in Arkansas, uh, right. but I think having a brewery actually down the road from you makes a huge difference in oh, converting yeah. you as a craft beer drinker. We've seen a lot of that, uh, and just having a brewery in your neighborhood does a lot too. Uh, right, which is what you guys kind of are. You're that you're that. I always say all the time that I think the craft brewery now can be kind of the neighborhood bar and you guys yeah, have really is. straddle that you have a nice you're right on the edge of a neighborhood sure. here and you said you have a lot of neighborhood regulars that come oh, yeah. in and then you're also right on the edge of like i think it's river market yeah and, yeah and this whole downtown area that's really starting to bustle here right the more you said you came out of the home brew scene like for you guys right uh, yeah, it's four of us. Yeah, yeah. Really good home brewers, and then yeah. Well, three really good home brewers, and, and, a, and a guy who talks. And so, <laughs> <laughs> somebody's got to be the business. Right, right? Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Just but a passion the, for the, drinking. The talker, yeah. A passion for drinking. The beer. <laughs> yeah. um, you approach it like home brewers. Yeah, it's true. You know, you're definitely got the professional level stuff going on, but um, you know. You guys dig up old recipes right. and things and try to come up revive those or just say oh, that sounds interesting let's yeah. do it yeah how has that been received in an area like little rock that isn't this big <laughs> mature beer scene like denver or asheville or portland or portland it depends <laughs> on the beer uh <laughs> to be honest with you and i'll tell you like uh, uh really the first uh the first time i noticed um, um first time i, I remember uh, uh, talking to Theron uh, about a beer, uh, it was at Little Rocktoberfest, and he made a Roush beer, which is a, a oh. smoke lager, um, right. uh, which, which I love, uh, which is a style Starting I love. Starting to see a little bit now, but not, yeah. a, not a ton. Not still. a ton, no, not it's, a ton, it's, yeah. it's definitely an acquired taste, yeah. yeah. It was it was a great beer, uh, and I said, man, I really love this beer. And he's like, well, good, because I won't drink it. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's like, he doesn't like, he didn't like Roush beer. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was a good introduction, because, you know, he, he was willing to brew kind of different things, whether it was something that, uh, that he had interest in or not. The, I, best, of, the best advice I ever got is that, um, uh, as far as uh, home brewers going professional, um, is you don't open up a brewery to make beer. You can do that at home. You open up a brewery to sell beer. Uh, and so you kind of have to keep that in mind. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> we could have we saved a lot of money just by uh, putting what we put into this into like some really sweet home brew <laughs> That's true. Uh, And so the kind of funky stuff is, um, is interesting. Um, and we, we like to do a lot of variety. We like to do a lot of limited releases. Um, uh, but we also like to do a lot of sessionable beers uh, because there's a lot of really great... Um, triple IPAs and Imperial oh, Stouts and like this and the other, which are great beers, but you can really just sip them and maybe have one of them. Uh, and, and we've kind of always, always want most of our offerings to be very drinkable, something that you can sit back and drink and enjoy. Uh, and even something like the Kellerbach, which is, um, uh, or the Kottbusser, or even the Lichtenheiner Weiss, uh, which are these weird kind of rare or extinct German styles that we've done. Um, have been something that if you like it, you can drink a few of them. Yeah, and we do have people do it. Yeah, right so we should probably try some of these. I, say, like, I like to drink beer. You like to drink beer. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, the, this is the Kellerbach and That's the Barrel Sour Stout, uh, Seamus Stout. This is the regular Seamus Stout. This is our Amadeus, which is which is our flagship, and this is our Pere Bovar. That's another thing that makes us unique is that we always have cider. Maybe the, yeah, maybe the, Ama the Amadeus. The Amadeus is a Vienna Lager. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's probably going to be that's your nice your beer. most approachable. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a pretty color, nice amber, um, uh, very drinkable, malty. Um, it's yeah, that it's, on the mal on the lager side, that's yeah. a good yeah. I guess I would say almost like an amber ale. Uh, yeah, but right on the lager side. The lager is so very smooth, it's very clean. That smooth, yeah, good flavor. Yeah, uh, the Amadeus has kind of been our uh, our good gateway beer. <laughs> so that's a good starter, and then this is the Kellerbach, right? Yeah, yeah. unfiltered. Uh, so you can see it's a so little, little, not quite as clear. I mean, it, it's it's very close in color, but not quite as clear. Of course, it's all, all also been settling for a couple of weeks now. Okay. Uh, and this is one that when first went on. 
it's probably mellowed out a little bit just over time in the kegs okay. um, uh, as it's been uh, able to settle out a little bit. Um, Got yeah. a little more body, a little more flavor. Exactly. A little brighter. Yeah, but still has a lot that nice Very maltiness. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of people have really liked this one. Um, yeah, I could see this being a beer that a lot of people would drink over and over and over. And they do. Uh -oh. She's creeping in. No, so I have a question in. actually. Yeah. While, while we're drinking the beer. Sure. And yeah. I, so it's home brewing, like yeah. being home brew, but how do you go from being home brewers to actual business owners? So I like that, like your story, I believe you did like a Kickstarter. So yeah. for all these entrepreneur people out there, like yeah. that's a good yeah. thing instead of us. It's like, how that's do you a good start idea. We're getting geeked out on <laughs> the beer. Maybe we should get geeked so out on when you, the no. people who brew yeah. it. Yeah. get a little higher. But when you love summer. these beers and you do want to sell the beers, how do you start a business? Because sometimes. I mean, not well, most times, it's expensive. Uh, yes, expensive. Uh, it was. Uh, we all pooled. That and my one up here. Yeah, which um, one? Which one? Seamus? Okay. Yeah. This is the oatmeal stout. <laughs> oh, there we go. Bring in the character. Um, uh, we, uh, story. Okay. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> no, no. We're not in New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. But it looks like we might be. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fine. It's, it's a kiss doll. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Gene Simmons, baby. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, we, uh, when we originally uh, started up, uh, we all put in an equal amount of money, uh, and um, uh, and started with that. Uh, it wasn't enough, um, um, and we did everything cheap. We did we did almost everything we legally could on our own on our own. Um, a lot of our stuff that we got um, the. Um, uh, the steel behind the bar that was from the scrapyard. Uh, so we had to do a lot of work uh, on our own. Uh, we got a lot of stuff from like Habitat Humanities Restore, uh, like that paper towel holder we got from there for like what a buck or something. Yeah, it wasn't much. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't much. <laughs> the self dispenser. So like we did everything that's, that's cheap. Brewer on the side of it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that, that, that's the really you know, talking one. So he's <laughs> he's brewing a beer that needs hop additions every three minutes. So he he's gonna pop in and out a lot. So if you hear an alarm, that's what that is. <laughs> the um, so we did all that kind of stuff, but even then, um, uh, that just got us far enough to get the fermenters and the uh, the cooler and the uh, and the kettles in. Um, uh, we didn't have any money for the tap room itself, uh, and and the original plan was just to be a, a wholesale brewery, uh, but it, it didn't take very long to figure out that that was not a real great business plan on a three barrel system. Um, it's uh, it's hard to make enough volume for that to pay the bills. Uh, and and that, that's a more expensive plan, really, to yeah. right once you get into there, because you have to produce a lot more beer to make the same amount of money as you can in your town. Right, and I, I remember the uh, uh, when they, they approached me about uh, about being a partner. The the way they framed it is, we'll just spend as much time on home brewing as we do now, uh, except for we'll get to sell it to people. Um, was that was the business concept, which. Either they were spending a lot more time brewing than I was, <laughs> uh, but that was the original uh, business plan. Uh, and uh, uh, but we kind of evolved uh, to thinking it was like, you know what? Um, you sell a keg of beer for this price. You sell a keg full of pints of beer at this price. Uh, one's going to add up a lot faster than the other. So uh, we we wanted to add a, a, um, a tap room. We had a space in, in, in the plan for tap room. We just didn't have any money for it. Uh, and that's where the Kickstarter campaign came in. Um, now back then, it, it was a lot harder to get access to credit uh, for, for like an upstart brewery. I know that's a lot easier now for a lot of places, or at least it was, that might be. Um, uh, Probably again, depends on the market. Yeah, you're retract you a little bit. But like here it might work. Yeah, yeah here because it might work. you have a good market that isn't oversaturated yet. Right, or, right. It, it, or saturated. And, and people that, uh, like we did the Kickstarter campaign, we raised over $20,000, it was fantastic. It, it's what we needed to like put us over the edge for this. Well, that goes a long way when you're, when you're willing to do the work yourself. But that carries into a cool space. Yeah, it does. It, it actually, you know, the old building, the ex some exposed brick here and yep. there, things like that, the handcrafted stuff all around. Oh, yeah. It yeah. just feels homey, and, and I think that's a lot of what yeah, Theron, a lot of craft Theron craft put down like the bar this. top and built the tables, really? uh, and those actually replaced tables that um, uh, we had gotten, you know, thrift stores or something. It's a like beautiful that. wood, too. So, it, it, it's bamboo flooring. Oh, really? <laughs> Bamboo is a beautiful wood. Yeah. <laughs> Were all of you guys still working? Like yes, your real, full time. Real jobs? Real jobs, yeah. Uh, I work for a museum. Okay. Uh, uh, that kind of, I think, is where some of our like kind of nerdy history beer stuff comes yeah. from. Uh, Theron was a commercial airline pilot. 
Oh, wow. uh, so he was uh, he was brewing on his you know days off between flying the skies. Um, Brad Brad still is an architect, and um, uh, Sean is an investigator for uh, the federal court system. Oh wow! Uh, and so that's uh, a whole wide, wide range. range. Yeah, <laughs> very, yeah. Wide range. Of two of them still do that. Yeah, two of them still do that. And and Theron and I in the fall of 2014 uh, uh, went to this full time. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So. I, st I still dabble in museums a little bit. I, I don't think you've flown in a while, have you? Yeah. <laughs> Not flying. Do you miss yeah. it, Theron? Not one day. Not one day. <laughs> As he flies <laughs> back and <laughs> forth into the brew room the because hops, he's, yeah. uh, he's in the brew house now dropping some more hops, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, Which is a fun job to have, let me tell you. <laughs> it, is, it is, yeah. Uh, dropping hops is one of the uh, best parts it, of brewing. Really. Dropping hops. <laughs> it is fun, but I say don't, don't get people wrong, though. It's not like the glamorous job that people out there really no. think it is. It's still, it's, it's still it's hard work. It's work, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it it's, a, a, it's a blue collar job brewing. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a lot of work. Like, it's, uh, and we've got, we're a small operation. We don't have things like, uh, you know, Loading docks and things like that. So when there's a big rain pallet, like uh, it's um, it's a lot of fun getting in the building. Yeah, and, so, it all and y'all saw that there's not a lot of space back there, and so it's um. We um, spend some breweries that are a lot smaller. That's true. That's yes. true. We uh, we're not as bad. Uh, uh, I've seen worse off, uh, but it, it can get kind of tight in there, especially if we've got um, a couple of pallets of things that don't have anywhere else to go, and they're just getting shuffled around and the, you uh, the brew floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so. <laughs> When but, the weather's uh, not cooperating and you yeah, have to keep yeah. things closed up, it's probably rough. Ooh, yeah. I stole the right here. Yeah, that's the that, that's, that's the sour for your sour life. Yeah, <laughs> that's the that's the sour. That's sour, the sour right? one. Oh, you stole the sour one. Yeah, yeah. The barrel sour. So so let me uh, so we have uh, we have a barrel program. I mean, a lot of places do. Our barrel program's pretty small. Uh, uh, there's actually a room out on the back uh, that's not climate controlled. So it, it's kind of like if you go to an actual distillery mm. and the seasons help um, bring. Right. Uh, the liquid in and out of the wood. Um, that one though, uh, we've got a much smaller program which is a barrel souring program. And, and once we, uh, we, we use Rocktown Distillery barrels. Um, uh, so These are the our, same beer. Right? Yeah, our, they are the same, same beer. Base. Yeah, yeah the same base beer, they're both Shane and Stout. Yeah, um, and we get barrels from them, fresh barrels from them, and we'll use them for like bourbon barrel stuff and things like that. After the flavor sort of uh, um, uh, dissipated after a few uses, uh, we will inoculate them uh, with, um, lack of a better word, bugs, souring agents, okay. uh, and um, like lactobacillus and, and pedicagus and um, uh, brittomyces and things like that. Uh, and we will add um, sometimes just beers that we have on tap anyway to them uh, to see what a sour version is. So, we, so we've done a sour version of the Zamadeus. Um, the um, beer he's baking right now, Amarillo Warrior, I think that was our first one in a barrel sour, wasn't it? Uh, Kolsch was. Kolsch was, okay, yeah. Uh, Kolsch, and we did um, uh, uh, double IPAs, we've done uh, Vienna Lagers, we've done a lot of different beers. Uh, with this, and we we put it back for a year. So that that stout has been uh, interacting with the souring agents for a year before it got caked up uh, in a non-climate controlled area, uh, and uh, yeah, it came out pretty nice. Yeah, That's so a pretty th pretty cool thing to do on sure. uh, on a brewery at your level. I yeah, mean, <laughs> you know, I mean that's the kind of thing that people when you hear of a Jester King or right, 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 right. Farmstead, right. which are the big wigs, which the big, are great. yeah, great Those places. are like the icons of that kind of style in America. Uh, but you're doing that on a level here where yeah, and, and, and each cool. one of those is like that shape of stout that was one barrel. Um, uh, so it came out to be, I think it was like one, maybe 25 gallon barrel, 30 gallon barrel. So it came out to be just a handful of Slim Kegs is all that we have of that. Right. Uh, and this is actually the last keg of it. Um, uh, we're almost done with it. Uh, but, uh, but so it's a super limited release. Like it's, it's something that is, is completely unique because if we were to put the same beer in the same barrel with the same stuff, it would not taste the right. same it be because it's a, it's a wild process and it's, right. uh, and it's that wild fermentation that exactly talk about exactly uh, and it's you know it's exposed to the elements so uh, it depends on what the climate is like that year that's so got to be the, the fun thing about that. a brewery this size is that and you guys all come from a home brewing background sure. so you kind of you get to like homebrew on steroids <laughs> yep. you know I mean, you get to take it up to another level and and things like this you get to play around and you get yeah. to see what it does and like it's going to be out one time yeah and when people are here they get it and if you don't you don't but 
We do a lot of experimentation, um, uh, which is fun, uh, hence the extinct styles, the barrels, all that kind of thing. Just throwing things up against the wall to see what works. Because um, uh, we, you know, um, we know that for a lot of these, there's not going to be a big market for it, but there always seems to be some market for it. Uh, and, uh, and, and people are interested in trying new stuff. Uh, and, and again, our stick is kind of variety, and so that uh, that falls into that. Somebody says, have you ever had a such and such? It's like, matter of fact, we made one. <laughs> we made one. Yes. <laughs> and honestly, that's what happened um, with our Lichtenheimer Weiss, which we just recently had on. Lichtenheimer Weiss is like an oak smoked Berliner Weiss. Okay. Um, uh, so it's kind of in the same Eastern Germany uh, vein as like Gosa's and uh, and Berliner Weiss and stuff like that, where you've got that real, that... Um, kind of uh, tart. Flavor. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that tart... Um, kind of acidic flavor from the lacto uh, bacillus because um, uh, uh, it's got a little lactic acid in it and, and it's uh, very tart but it's a very light easy drinking wheat beer uh, so um, uh, they're very thirst quenching uh, and Jenna Germany had one that had smoked malt uh, so it's kind of a combination of like a, a Rausch beer from Bamberg and a Berliner Weiss uh, and uh, the first time we made it First time we had tried to make a sour beer, we used acidulated malt. Uh, according to the recipe, this is what the rec recipe recommended. Didn't work that Didn't well. Work yeah. Uh, and then four years, it was off the rotation, and we tried it again. Uh, Theron had gone pretty good at kettle souring by now, mm -hmm. um, uh, which gave um, uh, a lot more pronounced tartness, uh, balanced out the smoke a lot better. And uh, we tried it again. We put it on, and people really dug it. Uh, like it's kind of. Um, it's almost like eating barbecue with like a uh, like a real vinegary kind of tangy okay. sauce. So, uh, it, so it, it really, it, it, it was, people say, this is really weird, but I can't stop drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a good problem. It is a good problem. problem. It is a good problem. So yeah, right. so that's the kind of thing that you, you, you know, first you don't succeed, <laughs> you try again. Well, one thing I want to touch on before we kind of wrap it up sure. is you, you, I've noticed that you guys also have some ciders. Yeah. yeah. How, how have ciders been received? Um, by your beer crowd, anyway. Uh, um, they, they've been received well. Um, I, I have to say, Which is from what the, we have right yeah, here, right there, the, the Pierre Bar. That's our that's our flagship cider, our year round cider. Um, they've been received well, although I have to say, um, they kind of have their own crowd. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Give the lady a drink. Pass Come on, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, that was probably really loud. Yeah. So, um, uh, like, they have their own following. Um, uh, we have people who drink both, but. The cider drinkers are kind of their own market. My mother doesn't drink beer. She likes cider. Well, that right there is enough of a reason to have cider. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. She's a nice lady. You gotta make mom in. <laughs> but, but I had I, I had dabbled with a little bit of cider uh, in my home brewing okay. uh, as well. Um, I don't know if the, any of the other guys did. I think that might have been my, my lone contribution to the uh, uh, to the brewing lineup. <laughs> when we got to uh, when we got kind of uh, where we were producing enough beers to keep the taps full, that was our only guest tap that was left was a cider. Beers. At first, we had to have a small winery permit to do it, uh, and now ciders are part of the brewing permits in Arkansas. Okay. So, so any brewery can make a cider. Uh, Two years ago, um, we tried putting some uh, fruit puree. Um, we got some guava puree, and we added it to that medium dry pear cider we've been making uh, um, all along. And all of a sudden, people were really into the cider. Uh, so we've got two ciders on tap now. The other one we have is a, a plum pear cider. Uh, and we also do a pineapple, uh, uh, apple cider. Uh, we had a cran apple uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, holiday season. It's amazing where that can go now too, because no, because yep. you know cider's just taking off. Yeah. So like expanding the market with ciders and different experimental types of beers sure. and everything. Where is Stone's Throw expanding, or where are you guys going? Uh, we are going to a second tap room, okay. um, and uh, uh, that's actually in the works right now. It's, we're we're very small, uh, three barrels. Um, how many how many barrels did we produce last year alone? There's six hundred. Right around six hundred right barrels, uh, which is about what um, I think. There's a brewery in town that has a fermenter that holds about that much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're very small. So, uh, so how does that second tap room then make you feel? Uh, well, we're excited about it. Um, uh, it's going to let us, um, uh, for instance. With, with all these 14 taps we have on here, we probably have four or five beers in the cooler we just don't have room for uh, of our limited releases because we do have to cycle through stuff pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, that one's going to have 20 taps, so it's going to uh, let us have more of our beers on tap at one time so they get to stick around longer, which is nice. Uh, but again, back from the beginning, it's 
uh, financially, it's a better plan to sell it yourself than okay. to sell it wholesale. Uh, so it's going to, um, uh, we're, we're hoping it's going to be a, a, a real game changer uh, where we go from, instead of um, most of our volume going wholesale, most of our volume going retail and getting the, the return on that. Uh, but we are opening up in another similar residential, uh, like a, a, a little business. Uh, this location and our new location are both old trolley stops. So it's a collection of like commercial buildings surrounded by residential because that's where you pick up your groceries when you got off the trolley on the way home from so work. So it can still be that neighborhood bar exactly. that draws a little bit of a tourist crowd. Especially, yeah. Especially as beer geeks that will go wherever. Wherever, yeah. Wherever the good beer is, that's where we go. That's right. That's why we're here. And we talk about living a stout life. And sure. it's obviously very much about beer, <laughs> but it's not always about the beer. It's about that community and everything that goes on. And so it's like living a stout life. Yeah. Not just drinking good beer. Although that's a good part of it. For us, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> but for you, Ian, and Stone's Throw, what would you say is living a stout life? What is a stout life for you and, and, and maybe for no, Stone's Throw? Or just It doesn't you. have to be Stone's Throw. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Like you um, uh, well, doing something, um, doing something that I'm passionate about. Um, and in a small way can make a difference in our local community as well as the lives of our customers. Like uh, um, we're a, a place for a lot of people, like this is their only socialization. Uh, like, right. you know, this is, this is where they touch the, the outside world. We've developed quite a, a family of just the folks that work here, the folks that hang out here, the folks that have been, you know, with us. Um, uh, since the beginning, uh, and so I think that that is kind of, uh, I guess for me, what living a, a, a stout life is like, is just having that connection with, uh, uh, with, with the people that, uh, uh, that enjoy, enjoy our beer. <laughs> so, that's a pretty dang inside. good way to say it. <laughs> I think that's a great way to say it, and I think that's a great thing that kind of spreads across the whole craft beer community. Sure. So. With that, I would say a cheers. Cheers. And I'm going with the stout. All right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That is good stuff. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> there are new episodes with new conversations every Sunday night. Be sure to subscribe and click the little gray bell so you don't miss out. Ian says it's as easy as throwing something up against the wall to see if it works. How do you come up with creative ideas? Let us know in the comments below or by following the link in the description.